Hello everybody and welcome to Knife Delights. We're headed out to the observation deck to see if we can't catch us some wildlife here early in the morning. But we're going to have to be careful. We've got thunderstorms on the way, I think. We're just going to go out and see what we can find. But we have to be very, very quiet if we want to catch one of those wasquee wabbits. Oh, I just love coming out here early in the morning. So beautiful. What's this? An orange handled knife. Huh. It doesn't say who made it though, does it? Look at that. But we got a bunch of numbers down there. Yeah, patent. Patent number, huh? Isn't that interesting? Well, here's another knife. Wow, am I lucky this morning. Look what I'm finding. What does this say? Oh, this is a hammer brand knife. Wow, isn't that cool? I wonder how old it is. Wow, look at that. There's a bunch of numbers on there. I wonder if those can help us identify this knife and, you know, when it was made. I don't know. That's interesting. Well, let's get on out here and, oh, well, one more. What does it say? It says Ranger. Yeah, Ranger. Oh, let me see there. Boy, I don't know who made Ranger. Maybe we can figure this out here. Hmm. Well, looky there. There's some more patent numbers. Wow, I wonder if that can help us out. I'll bet those patent numbers will tell us a story. Whoa. Look at this. What does this say? Hmm. Well, it says Marbles, Gladstone, Michigan, USA. Boy, this really looks like a really, really old knife. Maybe, just maybe it has one of those patent numbers on it. Oh, no, it says patent pending. That might be a problem. Well, I'm going to have to take these home, and we're going to have to do some exploring and see if we can identify, you know, who made all these knives and when they were made and a little bit more about those patents. Very often we can find a vintage knife in an antique store or maybe uh, our father or grandfather's uh, knife. We find it in a drawer somewhere. And usually the first couple of questions are is who made the knife and how old is the knife? Now some knives in recent years, you know, is like Buck and Case have a dating system. Um, most of them all have a, a tang stamp on it, and there's tang stamp charts that you can go by. But every now and then you run across a knife, and there's no uh, maker's uh, tang stamp on it, and all you can find is a patent number. So I just wanted to share with everybody what you can do with this patent number. Now you'll see this patent number here is 229-7855. And the publication of the, uh, of the uh, patent was in 1942, uh, October 6. So, and, and this also lists the anticipated expiration and status. We see that it was expired and uh, for the rest of its lifetime. But if we go way up at the top there, it shows there in 1940, October 9th, there was an application for a patent filed by Utica Cutlery Company. And in 1942, October 06, the application was granted. So it looks like it took about two years for this uh, patent to be approved and published. So if it's an approved uh, patent, um, we can say the, the beginning date range roughly is October 6th. 1942. Now patents run roughly, and this is just a ballpark figure, but um, roughly around 15 years or so. But we can see as this one did expire in 1959 in October. So there you go. What is that? We got 17 years there. 
And so we now have a date range that this was Utica Cutlery Company's knife. And we have, it was made somewhere probably between 1942 and 1959. Now it's not foolproof to use those dates as the uh, date range. It's pretty accurate as far as starting the beginning of the date range, but not necessarily the end of the date range. I am basing that on the, the theory that once the patent has expired, they're probably not uh, stamping the patent number, you know, on knives after the patent has expired. I mean, there's really no reason to. Now they could. They could have always stamped that on till the, you know, till they quit making that knife. But, uh, you know, common sense just says that, you know, once the patent is expired, there's no reason to stamp it. Um, so in finding these patent numbers, you can simply go to your favorite search engine engine and type in the patent number and hopefully that the the information on this patent will come up and as you can see here you also get uh, diagrams here on exactly what they're talking about here on this slide we can see the actual published patent um, and this they may be several pages long but I just took kind of a snapshot of of the beginning here so again, up in the uh, upper left-hand corner, you can see patented October 6, 1942. Upper right-hand corner, the patent number. And highlighted there, it shows that it was uh, bolstered handled cutlery. And it was submitted by Albert Allen and assigned to Utica Cutlery Company, Utica, New York. And then also highlighted down in the paragraph, uh, it starts to explain the purpose of the patent and what the patent actually applies to. So now that we have, uh, we've identified the approximate date range when this knife was manufactured. We know the company that manufactured it, and we know uh, who put in for this patent. Now that we've kind of established the procedure on, you know, searching for and, and finding the information on a certain patent number. I just thought I'd give another example here, and this is on this uh, two-bladed uh, Ranger jackknife. Now, there, it does not say who actually makes the knife. It just says Ranger on it. So we can see as we look through these slides here that the uh, knife was actually made by Colonial. So Ranger was one of the brands by Colonial. And uh, Colonial has a very, very long history. It's a, a fascinating knife company that I really love uh, studying about. Now on Colonial's knives, uh, their tank stamp chart, they, they basically always use the same tank stamp. That's just a general statement. So Colonial knives are awful hard to date. So that is why using this patent number, we can get, again, the date ranges and, and all of that uh, to try to establish when it was made and by whom it was made. Now, I do have a couple more examples that I'd like to share with you. Um, the first one being on Hammer Brand on this patent. And I encourage you to stick around for the last one on the Marbles Knife where it says Patent Pending because that's quite interesting, the information that I was able to find on the patent pending. So uh, Hammer Brand, there is a Tang Stamp chart mixed in with the Imperial Tang Stamp uh, chart. And that is because sometime in the 1930s, why Imperial did uh, acquire the Hammer Brand name. And so a lot of the knives made by Hammer Brand, Imperial continued with. And then uh, in, they, after the hammer brand, they kind of stopped making them under hammer and started just stamping them imperial, but it's kind of the same pattern. But there's just a lot of information that you can find out about uh, the hammer brand on its patents and a little bit of the company history on imperial. And then we'll uh, take a look at the uh, patent pending stamp. I found a very interesting marbles hunting knife in an antique store. And it was identified on one side, you know, the marbles uh, tang stamp on it. And then on the reverse side, or on the, the uh, pile side, it just had patent pending. Now, I did a search for marbles patents and things like that, but I didn't have a number and nothing really came up. But in previous research, 
I had found articles written about the Marbles Woodcraft knife. Now, what you see pictured here is uh, a modern version of it. Uh, the knives are, the brand is now owned by SMKW, I believe, and I think the knives are made in China. But it is a very storied company. As a matter of fact, Marbles was the first one to come out with uh, stacked leather handles and basically invented the modern hunting knife with the stack leather and, and the clip blade, and that was called the ideal knife. But uh, in addition to helping to find out when this knife was made, there are other clues that you can look at, by like measuring the handle. As you had read previously, that it originally came out with a three and three quarter inch handle, and this was intentional on the part of the inventor because he felt the proper grip when field dressing was to choke up on the handle with the base of the blade between your fingers. But Marbles did, through the years, extend the length of the handle due to customer demand. So measuring the handle can also give you a clue on when this knife was made. But I did also find a picture of a Marbles Woodcraft that had a 1916 patented stamp on the pile side of it. So again, going based on the article I read saying it was basically invented in 1914 and marble started producing in 1915 and the patented mark 1916, well, I date my knife at 1915 because after 1916, they're going to be putting the patented date on it and not patent pending. It's only going to be during 1915 where they have the pending uh, stamp on it. So it was very interesting to be able to find out more information about this knife, this wonderful old vintage marbles hunting knife with the stacked leather and the, uh, the uh, stag pommel on it. Just what a wonderful knife. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed uh, this video, and please feel free to leave a comment below if you have any further questions. But I just highly encourage you to uh, check out your knife, see if you have a patent number on it, and just, again, using your favorite search engine, just punch it in there and see what kind of information you can find out. So until next time, have a very delightful day.